North Korea might have dispatched fighter pilots to Russia who are capable of flying Russian military aircraft and could participate in the war against Ukraine, according to Newsweek. The agency said that North Korea has not only sent ground forces to Russia, but may have deployed fighter pilots to Vladivostok last month. These pilots were reportedly sent shortly before news broke of North Korea's ground forces being deployed on October the 8th. Newsweek suggests that the relocation of these pilots might be linked to training on Russian combat aircraft that are supplied to North Korea. However, it's also possible that Russia, currently facing a shortage of pilots, sought North Korea's assistance. If this is indeed the case, Russia would become the first foreign deployment location for North Korean fighter pilots since the Vietnam War. North Korean pilots also operated in Syria and Egypt during the 1973 Yom Kippur War. North Korea possesses over 900 combat aircraft, the United States Defense Intelligence Agency said in a report in 2021. The country's most capable combat aircraft were procured from the Soviet Union, including Su-25 ground attack aircraft and MiG-29 fighter jets. The Su-25 has seen extensive use in the skies of Ukraine, where several have been shot down. Dutch open-source intelligence defense analysis website Oryx has visually confirmed that 114 Russian aircraft have been destroyed and 15 damaged since the start of the full-scale war in Ukraine in February 2022, including 34 Su-25 aircraft. The U.S. intelligence report also claims that because of fuel shortages and concerns over aging aircraft, the North's Air Force pilots got as few as 15 to 25 hours in the air every year, leaving them inadequately trained and unable to maintain combat readiness. In this case, Ukraine has information regarding the preparation of two units of North Korean soldiers, specifically two brigades, stated Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. According to Zelensky, he received a briefing from Commander-in-Chief Oleksandr Sirsky regarding the situation at the front. They also discussed the issue of Russia training North Korean soldiers for the war in Ukraine. We have information about the preparation of two units of military personnel from North Korea, potentially even two brigades of 6,000 people each. And this is a challenge, but we know how to respond to this challenge. It's important that our partners do not shy away from this challenge as well. As partners, Zelensky said. He also expressed gratitude to Ukraine's partners who condemned North Korea's involvement in the Russian war. It's clear that Pyongyang, just like Moscow, they do not count people and do not value human lives. But we all around the world are equally interested in ending the war, not prolonging it. That is why we must stop Russia and its accomplices together, the president stated. He noted that if North Korea can interfere in the war in Europe, it indicates that there is not enough pressure on this regime. Russian invaders continue their attempts to occupy Chasivyar in the Donetsk region. Build analyst Julian Ropk writes about this. The observer believes that the Russians still managed to break through the city's defenses. 
Julian Ropk notes that the Russians were unable to cross the Seversky Donetsk Donbass Canal in the east for several months, but on Friday the Chechen vanguard crossed it and advanced 2.5 kilometers to the west along the southern edge of Chase of ER. After five months of fierce fighting, the Russian army broke through the Ukrainian front south of Chase of ER and planted its flag on an industrial building 2.5 kilometers across the canal. Russian soldiers can be seen climbing the building and preparing a bridgehead there, Ropk wrote. The analyst explained that most likely, the Russian invading forces will not advance further west, but instead will turn north and attack the center of Chase of Yar. On October 20th, Russian invaders occupied the village of Zelenoy Toroy in the Pokrovsky district of the Donetsk region. This is stated in a report by the monitoring project Deep State. Analysts also confirm that Russian troops have advanced in Vishnevo, Izium district, Kharkiv region, Gornyak in Donetsk region, Olgovka in Kursk region and Lubomovka in Kursk region.